All right, welcome folks to another Monkey Mission. And today I've got a special guest out of South Africa, uh, a friend of mine by the name of Peter. And uh, what we were gonna do is basically just talk through some of the things that are going on relative to this riot and the looting and things of that nature. Uh, because here in America, we typically don't get a lot of information of what's going on outside of America. Um, and it's very limited. And so uh, I figured, you know, this would be a great way to just kind of uh, one, meet our guest and two, uh, get a real feel by a local in the area of what is really happening. Uh, so Peter, welcome to the show, my man. Ah, oh, thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you bet. So, uh, so we see on the news, some very, very light here in the US. It's, uh, you know, maybe less than probably two minutes worth of uh, information. We know there's rioting and looting, looting going on in South Africa, but a lot of people don't even really understand the area, uh, you know, as to where it really is taking shape. Uh, and also, you know, we see things going on in Cuba, but it's, uh, it seems like right now the world is in a bit of an upheaval. Now, what happened in South Africa to cause all of this? Monkey, yeah, it's it's actually a long story to get to the point where we are at at this point. Um, the main thing that triggered it was the arrest of our previous um, president, President Jacob Zuma, who was arrested on um, being in contempt of court. He didn't show up for a, a court case. And he's been playing around with the court, you know, going back and forth. And it's been an ordeal for years now, probably about two or three years. And the court finally decided just to arrest him for contempt of court. So they tried and back and forth to, to stop the arrest, but he had to give himself over within five days. And within those five days uh, in Nakandla, which is his, where his homestead is in KwaZulu Natal, which is close to Durban. That's where he was staying. And the people started grouping and gathering in Nakandla. The thing that people need to remember is South Africa is currently under level four restrictions, which means you are not allowed to gather at all. Before we could do groups of 50 people or so, but at this point, you are not allowed to gather at all. So these people started gathering together at Nakandla at the gates uh, in support of him not being you know, arrested and jailed. And last week, stepping a week before that in Swaziland or Eswatini is the country, it's a small little country within South Africa. They had uppressed and going on and people looting and burning down and it hasn't spilled over to South Africa at that point. And funny, before that, I was watching some YouTube videos and I saw what's going on in California with the looting that's going on with the pharmacies and Walgreens and all that stuff. And I said to you, my wife, you know, if, this, if people see this and the people that are struggling in South Africa, that's obviously hungry and without work and stuff, that's going to spill over to South Africa. And moving back again to Zuma was arrested. He finally went over and gave himself over and he was jailed. He's got to be jailed for 15 months or something for being in wow. contempt of court. And from there, it just spiraled out of control. It started with people just looting for food at that point. Um, and what they want to do is they want to make the country ungovernable. And from there, it was over the weekend, past weekend, and on Monday, they started, actually on the Friday, they burned the trucks. Now, if you look at the map, if you travel from Durban to Pretoria, which is a northbound route, it's the N3 highway. Okay, yeah, and I see that. all our main supplies comes in from Durban Harbor. So everything that's imported is mainly coming to Durban. And then from Durban, it's trucked up to Gauteng and they, Literally at Cato Ridge, which is halfway between Peter Maritzburg and Durban, they torched, I think it was 32 trucks. Wow. Uh, set them alight at the toll gate and looted the trucks at that point, which meant that whole highway was closed down. It's still closed at this point. You can't travel up um, north or south on it. 
And by that Monday, they started looting the shops in that specific area. Yeah, there by Cato Ridge. Okay. And from there, it just spiraled out of control. Obviously, they used the excuse that it is because Zuma is um, jailed and wanted to make the country ungovernable. And it moved over to literally rioting for food. So they went into stores and literally just stole whatever they could big shopping centers they moved in um one of the stores is actually it's partly owned by walmart which is the mass mart group uh called macro macro is basically a super center of walmart that's what it looks like and they literally within two hours they carried that store empty that there's nothing no tvs nothing it everything is gone and it moved from, you know, stealing food to literally looting for whatever you can put your hands on. Wow. Um, they closed down the stores at that point. And it, would, it seems like during the night, they would come at night and just carry away. So in the, in the mass mod group, there's two big company change, uh, chains. And both those chains closed down um, in order to protect, obviously, their, their products. Yeah. At that point, when they did that, of course, with Durban being the main port, there's all the distribution centers is also located between Durban and Peter Maritzburg. And at that point, they just went into the distribution centers and literally, again, cleared out the distribution centers. That is what's currently still happening down in Durban. Yeah. Up in Gauteng, we did not have that much looting going on, except for south of Johannesburg in the Soweto area. There, the stores there was also cleared out, um, but it seems like that part is under control. The biggest area that's for us now is still a problem is between Peter Maritzburg and, and Durban. Okay. The biggest issue, and if I look at the international coverage on ABC and you know, those guys, they show a little bit of a store that's being rioted and carried empty. The bigger problem is with these distribution centers, no food can be transported between distribution center and store. So at this point, there's no food in KwaZulu Natal available for people to buy. I'm laughing about it, but that's just how ridiculous it is. I mean, it's, it's hard to fathom how quick, quickly this happened. Yeah. And I've watched your videos and there's some that's, you know, you're talking about stocking up and prepping and getting stuff ready. And as I was typing the email to you, I think on Monday, I was like, you know, this is just incredible that we've, we've reached this point that there's no food. We went out up in Gauteng two nights ago. I said to my wife, let's just go out and get some meat, um, you know, stack up on some meat. The stores is empty up here because now it's got a, a chain on effect because everybody is now worried that this writing is going to move up north yeah. and we won't have food available. So everybody went and bought out everything and now they can't restock because some of that stock has to come from KwaZulu Natal. So yeah, it's, at this point, it's, it's an absolute total crazy nightmare. Wow. It's, it's, uh, it, what is, uh, I think the thing that catches... Uh, my attention is just the fact that uh, how quickly the chaos can spill and cause, you know, shortages and things like that. It happens within hours. And it's, it's, yeah. um, it's absolutely amazing. It's everything from, from fuel, you know, to, to just your basic gas. Nobody cares about TVs and things like that. When you got to feed your family, you know, I mean, unless you're bartering or something, right. But um, uh, now I saw the latest report I saw was 72 people had been killed and there was 1,250 and some change uh, that were injured. Who are these people that have been killed? Are they looters or are they people that they're that the looters are actually taking out? No, it's 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 looters. I, the last we normally get an update at night of how many people were arrested, how many were killed. They don't update during the day. So the last ones I also have is from last night, which was 72. Um, these are actually looters. It was it was so insane that they basically ran over one another. And um, I'm trying to think of the store Costco 
If you yeah. go to Costco, they have these racking systems that's really high. Yeah. So on some of the reports that I saw, it is actually stuff that fell on these people um, and killed them. The others were in the rioting, were ran over and killed. That That's how it happens. Of yeah. course, the police is um, shooting rubber bullets, trying to keep the the um the order but it's it's not working uh about live um ammunition i don't know i won't go out there and say that they are uh -huh. i just know for a fact um the people that's currently in durban harbor trying to secure stock and stuff that's still in containers coming in those guys are running out of ammunition they i have a contact that i can confirm that is true are flying ammunition down from Gauteng that they've brought up down to Durban for these guys that's protecting their products that's coming in on the ships. That That's how dire it is um, that they're running out of ammunition. It's it's just crazy to think about it. Yeah, that's uh, that. if you're running out of ammunition, that means you're using ammunition. So, uh, and so that's the port here. And so the, it seems like they're, uh, they're now going into the port area, which is really threatening everybody. What are the gun laws in South Africa? Is it, um, is it, you know, I know there's uh, like the UK, you can't really own a gun. Uh, I know in Germany, you can own a gun, but it's like, uh, you know, you have to have a hunting permit that's only used for hunting. There's like different restrictions, you know, wherever you go in the world. What's it like in, in uh, South Africa? Okay. When well, in South Africa, we have strict gun laws. You have to, um, apply and go through a whole competency test and to in order to apply for guns and then you have different categories which is your cut hunting category where you can own some serious guns um, and then self-defense is like nine millimeter and stuff like that yeah. but it's a it, they're very strict on it and obviously like in the u.s everybody is trying to you know remove guns which is a very interesting topic to go into for South Africans because the the current minister of uh, police wants to disarm everybody and mm. at this point you have to protect yourself so it's it's, it's a serious a serious topic um, a lot of yeah. people can get really upset just like you guys in the states if I see the you know the gun lobby and everything i'm pro gun unfortunately for the other people i am i have to protect myself and i have to protect my family yeah. and that's just how it is um but yeah. yes there the biggest problem is um is corruption within the police so there was a time where there was like amnesty where you could go give in your gun and they would destroy it but it never got destroyed and it got stolen so all these guns are now in you know, in the hands it should not be. Oh, wow. um, and the other people that's trying to do it legally is having a really difficult time. I can also tell you just quickly on that, to get a license in South Africa will take you, now it's probably going to take a year and a half, but it yeah. took about a year just to get approval and to get a printed, you know, we've got a license card um, to get that specific card for you to own a, lot, so a gun. So you'll go out and buy a gun. That gun will stay in safety with the store until you have your license card yeah. um, because it's got to be printed with all the, the numbers and stuff. So serial it's like, a tax, like a tax stamp almost. That sounds very similar to how we are um, with our suppressors. Like I, I just bought a suppressor back in right after the first of the year. Um, and uh, for my, my 300 uh, wind mag and, and that thing, I haven't gotten it yet. It's still being held at the store. I'm waiting for the ATF to approve me. And it's a, like a nine month process. Um, mm -hmm. Now, are they over there? You also have, uh, do they have shortages on ammo and everything else uh, like yeah. you have here in the States? Um, we could, before this whole deal to get ammunition was not that big of a deal. We're not allowed to keep a whole bunch. Um, I can't remember exactly what the amount exactly is. Um, how many people are actually following the rule, I don't know. But um, you're limited on the amount of ammo you can keep. But ammo is also extremely, extremely expensive in South Africa. So to buy hunting type of you know, rifle um, is just insane. So the guys that go out and hunt and stuff, they, they buy and 
go shoot out for hunting. Nine mil, it's it's still it's okay. It's not that crazy expensive, but it is expensive. Yeah. With the writing now, people started looting firearm stores. So okay. they're going in, clearing that out as well. Um, I know some suppliers, the guy that I know that works for a supplier, they're out of stock because people is moving it, you know, down to Kuzunu Natal area. Obviously, everybody is scared. Everybody is worried. Um, everybody's trying to protect their property and they are buying up ammunition. So at this point, there is a serious shortage. Yeah. So let me ask you just from a, a, a landscape perspective, um, you and your neighbors, if you were to look at like here in Texas, uh, I think the average house probably owns 12 guns. You know, it's uh, it's pretty crazy. And I, I could go literally to my next door neighbor and the one down, the one down and keep going more than likely. Get it in the back people. of the pickup. I remember when I was in the States, uh, the yeah. guys would with it in the back, the, in the back window of the pickup. Yeah, gun rack. Yeah. 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 I mean, it literally, you, you would have more people here in Texas that have guns than don't have guns, you know, as yeah. what I'm saying. So in South Africa, is it that case or is it, is it pretty rare if you have a gun? You don't really know that everybody's got guns. Um, most people, I would say, will have guns. Again, the ones that's lobbying not, you know, to have guns, they are the ones that don't obviously have. But it is, it's part of our life in South Africa protection. Um, it's a bit different than what you guys obviously used to. Yeah, You have to watch your back constantly. Um, that's just, it's something that we're used to. So yeah, carrying a gun is not, not that unusual to see somebody carry a gun. There is some stores you're not allowed to go in if you have a gun. That, that's part of a problem, people leaving it in their vehicles and the vehicles getting stolen. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, most people, I would say, is carrying guns for safety, for stuff like this. Um, yeah. So is it, crime, it, crime pretty high over there? Yeah, crime is out of control. It is. Yeah. That's, you know, monkey, to think about it is I... Uh, Pulling back to some of your previous videos where you talked about, you know, getting ready for when stuff happens. Yeah. We are past that point. We are at stuff is happening and where we're going yeah. from here. It yeah. sounds terrible, but that's the, the reality of it. Mm -hmm. um, when we go out at night, I have two security gates that I go through and a third gate to get out of my property. Um, and the same, obviously, for coming back. Then that's talking about vehicles leaving. Then I still need to get into my house. Um, that's the idea of being safe. Um, we try not because we live out in the country as well. We live about 15 kilometers out of out of the city center. Um, we don't travel at night because people they'll pull like spikes, like the police have spikes. But they will make makeshift ones and you know pull it in front of your car to get you to pull over and then they'll rob you on the highway and i mean that's like the interstate it's not a little bitty road off to nowhere that's on a main interstate so we avoid traveling at night for those reasons and obviously hijackings it's crazy the amount of hijackings in south africa is is insane that's part of a society unfortunately the the um what do you call it the employment rate is so low, uh, you know, the unemployment rate is a high, um, that people are stealing for survival. And then there's people that stealing and killing for, I, I almost want to say it's sport for them because they don't have anything to lose. Um, mm. That's the point they're at. Wow. I was trying to think, uh, working out the government with lockdown, they gave out like a social grant for people and to work it out, it's 25 US dollars for a month. Now you can imagine what do you do with 25 US dollars yeah. it's for, to keep your family going? That's yeah. nothing. Yeah. So for those who lost their jobs and jobless um, jobs were lost in huge numbers during lockdown and during the COVID situation. And I believe that also is part of, you know, this looting situation. It, it, got to trying to get food or was because of Zuma and protesting. And then it was trying to get food and then it just got totally out of control. Yeah. I don't think you get that genie back in the bottle uh, based on what I'm seeing in terms of the looting. I think 
uh, it seems to me with appearance that it, that it has just from looking at it, uh, it is so out of control. There's so many people yeah. there that it's, it's um, when you have a country that is starving, uh, same thing going on in Cuba right now, uh, trying to contain people that are hungry, they get hangry, right? And so uh, it's uh, now if you go back and look at uh, pre-COVID, before all that happened, there was a lot of news stuff that we would hear. I'd say a lot of news. You had to look for it, but there was a lot of news about how farmers were actually being executed. Uh, can you touch on yeah. that a little bit? What what was going on there? Well, it's been a problem for for many years. Um, in COVID, I'm not sure if it's you know the news coverage. Obviously, in South Africa, is also just COVID, COVID, COVID. Um, but you still hear about the farm murders. So. In the Cape Town area, that's more south of where I am, and also in Durban, there has been situations where guys come in and kill out the farmers. Now, you have to remember, a farmer employs a certain amount of people, um, which is local people, and when that farmer is murdered out, there's nothing left. So all those guys are losing their jobs. Um, but it was at a point where it was, it's like, it's more dangerous to be a farmer than it is to work in um, money transiting. That's how dangerous it got because you're a target out there on a farm. They would come at night, six, seven guys, heavily armed and literally just kill for a sport, for a cell phone or anything small. You know, it's senseless to kill for a cell phone. That's what I would think. But that, that's the situation of it. Um, and that's why obviously everybody is carrying guns and you know trying to be safe. The problem is it happens so fast that before you as a farmer or you as a person in a house can realize what's going on, they are on top of you because you don't know where they are, but they know exactly where you are. Yeah. Um, we get situations where farms are marked and it's something stupid, but they will hang a little piece of red cloth on a fence. And then the next part would be, and every color has got a different meaning. So they will, and stones and stuff like that. So they'll put down a red Coke can, and that will mean to the, the robbers or something that this person is um, armed and obviously dangerous or anything. So that, that's the first marker they'll get. And then the second marker would be where the entrance, the easy target entrance would be in your house. Uh, we found one of those markers. We had it on our property as well before when I installed a brand new solar system for my water hole. And after it got stolen, unfortunately, you know, it's not something you check every day. And after it got stolen, we picked up these markers and walking it back, that's, you see, you know, this, this marker tells this color and stuff. You can go Google it. It's, it's, it's very interesting, actually. The last one we got on our property was about a month ago, where it was markers put out a shoe on you know the fence, on a fence post. Now, for me, coming from the States and that history, I remember shoes hanging from a wire, and that would mean there's drugs or something, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, okay. for them, it means totally something different. And... Eventually, we got to the point where the marker showed a layout of the house and what rooms in the house and stuff like that. It's crazy, but that's that's how they operate. And wow. if, if you can pick up those markers before, you can be ready for it. And, you know, it's just... But you have to know what you're watching, life. what you're looking for, right? That's It almost yeah. sounds like uh, the stuff that's going on up in Somalia with the uh, the pirates and the... Yeah. Uh, that's That's crazy. So... The um, now let me ask you a question is, is this is it seems like is this race driven where it's actually you know they're going after white farmers or what is the what's the premise behind it? You know, Ma Matthew 24 talks about nation will rise up against nation, and that is that if you go to the root word of that, it's ethnos, which is ethnic, right? It, mm -hmm. it is you know basically people black, white, you know, Hispanic, whatever it may be, it's different. Mm -hmm ethnicity of people right and that's what matthew 24 talks about it and talks about yes. increasing lawlessness 
And it sounds like you're just living Matthew 24 there. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, it is. It, when you look at the Bible and the predictions, it's, it's insane when you, you know, this is happening now. Of course, in South Africa, we have a, a very long history with racial issues. Um, to be very honest with the farmers and the murderers or the murders of the farmers, it is black and white both targeted. Um, again, you have to go look at the demographics. Again, there are more white farmers yeah. um, than there is black farmers currently in, in the country. So, yeah, I would say, you know, is it towards white farmers? I can almost say guarantee yes, but there is also the black farmers that is targeted. So it, it's very difficult, you know, to, to say that. However, when you, it's, it, it's something to be very passionate about when you, your own race is being gunned down for nothing. We had one that was a very big deal that got everybody upset was last year. I can't remember exactly when, but it was in the free state. And this is a young guy who was like 22 years old, went and visited his family and went back to the farm he worked on and he didn't come home. So his girlfriend finally went and left, tried to find him, couldn't find him, called his dad, and his dad came over to that specific farm he was working on. And on his way, they cut his throat, they hang him on a pole next to the road. Um, you know, when you start to see stuff like that, and it, it's your own people, it, it gets difficult. It, you get very passionate about it. And, you know, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's difficult to hear. Yeah, well, we see in, in the US, we see a lot of the race baiting going on. And unfortunately, you know, like you get the BLM movements and Antifa and all the other different things, which are, uh, it's unfortunate, but you can see how they are, uh, even the media almost twists it to the point where they're, it's, they put you into a frenzy and they're almost, it's not almost, they're actually causing these things to get yes, to be worse totally than agree. what they ought to be. Um, and I, I, you know, regardless of skin color, you know, when you're murdering somebody, it, it, it's, it's bad, right? Um, yes. And so, um, but it sounds like as I look, I look at the looting going on, it looks a lot like the stuff we see here in the US with like Ferguson and, and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, some of these, these areas that are not necessarily good parts of town, but they have the same type of methodology and approach. They go in, they loot, they, they burn things down, um, they shut down highways and, and, um, you know, keep, the flow of people but it, it typically spills over for a couple of days and then they come in with a big police presence and then it just kind of uh filters out for you know a while summer it always seems to be in the summer i don't know why that is but uh it seems like we're into that cycle now where every summer they just it just keeps increasing and so in in south africa is it uh i'm looking at the looters that i see and it looks to be very similar in nature uh that we would see here in the u.s is um are these bad areas of town that they're doing this in, or are they coming into good areas uh, and, and doing the looting? Okay, yeah. Um, I think I would like to comment just on, before you, your question is on the black and white situation, especially with Black Lives Matter and stuff like that. I can be very passionate about that when, when it gets to that point where I yeah. don't support Black Lives Matter at all, because yeah. I think it's senseless, all lives matter. Yeah. Um, we all have situations we have to deal with. And I think it's, it's very important, you know, and it depends on how you as a person deal with it. And religion has got a big part of that. Um, yes, I understand that the black communities in South Africa has been disadvantaged at during a specific time that was before my, my birth even. Yeah. Um, and if we look at the time frame where we're at today, story still blaming apartheid for stuff that's happening today is yeah. absolutely, sorry, BS. Yeah. Um, there, there's just, you know, I hate being held responsible for something I had nothing to do with. That, that's yeah. the situation I'm in. Yes, I understand there's people that's, that's struggling but that's on both sides. There's white people that's struggling. There's Indian people that's struggling. There's black people that's struggling. But it depends on how you look at it. Um, 
you know there is always a second story to it mm -hmm. and yes the media is totally pulling it apart and is biased i believe um and yeah it's, it's sad to see the media going to that i i try to avoid you know watching too much news especially in south africa i tend to go to youtube to watch my news so that i can get all different views but yeah it's 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 crazy um to get back to the looting part um in the areas it's happening well where the president's um, house was is a rural area and it's actually very sad to to see it if you go and google Nakandla, which is his homestead, it is a multi-million dollar estate that he's living in. It's a huge place that was built with tax money. Yeah. Um, and it's inside of this area where there's really poverty stricken people that is that is struggling. So that's where it started. Yeah. And they started looting close to home i would say if you look at especially in soweto up here in Gauteng, where i'm at um and in guzulu natal they looted close to home i would say and then it got to the point where um those stores didn't have anything more so you, you only saw people running around and grabbing stuff and running away but then if you on the map you've got the um yeah there's up. North of Durban, there's one that says Phoenix and Schlanga. Yeah, up here. Yeah. Yeah. That area um, from Durban north to Mshlanga is, is a very classy, high class um, neighborhood. And the people in Phoenix were the ones that were hit the hardest in, in the last, I would say, four days. But the community also now started fighting back. Um, so they are closing off residential areas so that people can't go in. Um, in that specific area that you're showing on the map there now, there is Umschlanga, and then moving in towards the country is a lot of, um, how do you say it, disadvantaged people living, squatter camps, stuff like that, you know, in that area in. So they looted whatever they could from their community. And now they started, if you see the footage as well, it's available, they're driving. So when the distribu distribution, distribution sorry, centers were hit, um, you see more people actually driving there, looting, packing their cars and leaving. So it's not the local guy anymore, you know, that, that's stealing. They're going out now to go and steal. There's one video out there where the guy's driving a Mercedes Benz, one of the fanciest new ones available. And he's carrying a basket full of stuff that he looted back to his car, putting it in the in the trunk, and off he goes. And I'm like, what? You can drive a Mercedes Benz. Why do you go steal stuff? It's it's just insane. Yeah, yeah. Well, the heart of uh, the hearts of many will grow cold and um and lawlessness will increase. I mean, we can just you know, look, look at, uh, at what the Bible tells us is going to unfold. And it seems to be uh, at, you know, at a breakneck speed, just continuing to happen uh, around the world, which is kind of crazy. And so it's, it's, uh, we're seeing um, a big squeeze on supply right now, globally, right. Yeah. And, and I know they're saying that, that uh, a lot of that happened because of COVID, because factories shut down and things like that. But there's droughts going on. There's locusts that are destroying crops. There's, uh, there's just a lot of areas that are, you know, very uh, dependent in terms of, of, you know, people needing to get that food, right? And they, uh, the last yeah. number I saw, it was 811 million people that were, uh, you know, along the poverty line or starving right now around the world, yeah. which is about 10% of the, of the world population is actually starving and so when you take situations like like uh you know this president being you know zuma going to jail it's not necessarily it's just a catalyst right people just looking for excuses now to yeah. justify the means right so they basically it's easier go, to you know find what? an excuse than it is to find a job yeah yeah and yeah. hey why if 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 uh you know that's that's a, it's a slippery slope, and I, and I see governments doing it all over the world. And it looks too, from what I'm reading the headlines, 
um, if, if they were to kind of show the cards of what's coming, I would say when we get to the fall, it's going to be a, a dark winter. It's uh, looking like all indications are that they're going to be pushing another lockdown. We've got in the States um, a strain of the virus that's coming through called the Delta uh, strain. Yeah. And I don't know if you're hearing about that over there, but it's, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty bad. And, and so what do you think is next? Do you see, I don't see a lot of police presence, uh, when I'm looking at these videos uh, with the looting, are they just letting them run wild and, and they're just figure sooner or later they'll, they'll just, uh, you know, run themselves out of energy? What, what, what do you think's next? Well, um, today, especially, um, you could see there is more presence. So at first, I just left them to absolutely run a riot. The police in our country is debatable if they're doing their work or not um in my opinion no but yeah they were letting them run them crazy like well, you, you could not imagine and then on monday again we are in lockdown with covid so on monday the president had a speech where they extended our lockdown also with the delta variant in south africa that's out of control and of course we're in vin in winter months now um he had his speech on monday and it was he basically ignored it he just said we all need to calm down and live our lives and with what happened on monday with the stuff moving towards the distribution houses and getting out of control more and more, especially also in Gauteng area. He had a speech uh, scheduled for Tuesday afternoon or Tuesday night, where he supposedly was going to put us in state of emergency, but he never did. Uh, that would have put stuff in place for more control. Now, is that good or bad? I don't know. I don't really think it's good if you go under government control. I would like to stay away from that. But yes, he at that point said the South African, um, basically like the army or what do you call them, the National Guard. They employed them and got them out to go to these specific points. And I think over the country, it was two and a half thousand people that was, you know, pulled up to go and assist the police. Now, if you look at the videos, those guys, it's literally thousands of people that stampeding these malls. Two thousand people across the whole country ain't going to do anything. They're not going to stop them at all. Yeah. Yeah. Then yesterday they came out and said, OK, they're going to get some more people and increase it to five thousand people. And then finally, by last night, they said they're going to pull it up to 25,000 people. Now, first, I don't know where they're going to get those 25,000 people, but maybe they'll employ some more or something. I don't know where, where they're going to find them. But yes, so once they started moving in, it was, you know, calming down. There is literally still places like Phoenix that I showed you that is totally out of control because they, they just run these guys over. Yeah. And then we had a situation, I saw some videos yesterday of that was live of them showing the rioters and the army and the police, you know, trying to keep it under control. And the police finally left and they just came later that night and ransacked the whole building. So how effective it really is, I, I can't really comment on that. Um, it doesn't look that effective. Hopefully it will. For future, I think we've reached a point in South Africa um, that's going to be hard to turn around, especially um, if you look at the investment that these guys have lost just by writing the distribution centers, these big stores, to recover from something like that is, is very difficult. Small businesses won't recover at all. Um, and if I'm mass mark i would think twice before i continue to invest in the country i live in that's sad to say but that's the reality we are at i can also understand you know you can take just so many hits and then 
then it's done and over with. Yeah. Um, with I don't know what Mass Mart is going to do at this point. They closed all the stores across the country, so all Mass Mart stores are closed. You can't can't you know go to any of them. Of course, their supply chain has been you know crashed with these guys. Um, yeah, it's difficult to say for the future. It's we've we've come so far in our country with the trouble we've had. Um, my heart says, you know, it will be okay. We'll get through it and we'll move on. But my brain says it's going to be a tough times coming ahead. Yeah, yeah I think in the in the coming weeks, uh, just given what you've described, I think people that are not prepared or weren't prepared when this hit uh, are going to be struggling for food and, and water and resources. Mm-hmm. It sounds like um, just not a good situation to be in. So, no, it, if you look at, at today's reports, the people, especially in Guazul Natal, is having terrible time trying to get resources and food and stuff. The stores are closed. They are allowed to buy, I think, six items per person. Mm. They are standing in lines that is, I want to say, two, three miles long just to get into the store. So there's there's limited food available. Um my wife has got a chemical company and they they make um, pool products, pool chemicals. Of course, everything is in Durban area and it has to come up to Gauteng. <laughs> we can't get any stock up to Gauteng. So we have to leave tomorrow. I'm driving about 1,200 miles to go and get stock of a specific product so that they can make a product um, because the supply lines are just, messed up i've got to travel to port elizabeth tomorrow um you know and we don't know if there's enough fuel on the roads so we made this plan we're going to take some uh, jerry cans with us to fill up and they announced just after 12 today that the new law says you can't fill up containers anymore you can only fill up your car i know in guzulu natal they can only put in i think like 15 gallons at a time um stuff like that it's 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 insane to think that you have to live like that you know and how quick it happens that's just how that amazes me yeah it's how yeah, it, it seems happens. like uh, within about 10 days this whole thing is just completely unraveled and so yeah um well i tell you what man we will uh be keeping uh you and your family and everybody in our prayers man the uh uh would you mind coming back and uh giving us updates as as we kind of go through this i'd love to hear how things are taking place because we're not getting this on our news and i think it would be you know having that firsthand knowledge yeah absolutely really happening i would I appreciate that yeah all right good deal all right folks so listen that's going to wrap up this uh the monkey mission for today and so we will definitely have peter come back and uh walk us through what uh what's going on and uh, uh be safe out there brother we will do so thank you monkey appreciate yeah, you it bet. oh you bet all right god bless monkey out Mm-hmm.